Hello, my name is John Schneider. When I was a kid, I used to visit my grandma Vi in the Jersey Bayshore area, and I'd take 8mm movies of my family and their friends. In fact, I was the family filmmaker. Today I live here, but traded my film camera for video, and recently shot this tugboat in the Shrewsbury River. Welcome to Jersey Bayshore Country. This is where you'll find Raritan Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, as well as Sandy Hook Bay. Where is the Jersey Bayshore? Let's get oriented by starting with the big picture. It's somewhere in here, part of the universe and definitely part of our world. But it's like no place I've ever experienced. And as soon as we land, I'll show you around. Hello everybody, I'm John Schneider. I'm your host for Jersey Bayshore Country and I am so excited about today. I've been waiting for this moment for about six months, ever since the leaves started falling on the trees and the snow started coming down and it got really cold and I had to take off my sunglasses and go inside and spend the winter waiting for this moment, I'm glad it's here. It is, for all intents and purposes, spring. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to get out of my yard and fertilize and pull weeds and plant shrubs and get flowers ready and get mulch and you know what, but that's not my <laughs> that's not my expertise. So I have invited an expert who understands spring. It is not Mother Nature, it's probably Mother Nature's son, as the Beatles once said. My good friend Chip Nolan of Skytop Landscaping. Chip, how the heck are you? Doing great, John. How you doing, Chip? Oh, that's a hearty handshake there you got. So have you been out working the soil yet this year? You know what? My guys came in last week for about a half a day to do some uh, cleanup. And get our stuff all prepped and ready but we're starting our work next week but it's middle of march and it feels like spring to me uh what can i possibly do or should i just wait until it's officially the first day of spring and then start doing stuff you don't have to wait i mean the weather forecast for the next yeah, 15 days are showing up upper 50s oh good lord so i mean right now i mean i don't think we're gonna get much any more snow i mean there's always a chance we might get a little bit more snow but at this point being mid-march Probably won't. So I, I'm going to oil the hinges of my back door, and I'm going to unlock it and, and push it outward as quick as I can to see what's going on out there. What's the very first thing I should do when I step outside? I would take a walk of the property and see what you need to do exactly. I mean, are the plants starting are they overgrown from last year? Is there a lot of leaves sticks down? I would start making a mental note or write down and see where you want to go and what do you want to do for this season. Well, let's start with the simplest thing, which I think is, for some people, not for me, your lawn. I, I, I had, you were nice enough, uh, your company, to come and, and put new sod down. And for one reason or another, I overwatered it sometimes, and sometimes it just it went through a drought, and uh, it turned brown in spots. So I feel like I need to do something with the lawn. Here it is, the middle of March. Uh, what do I do? What's the first thing yeah, I do? The first step you do, or the first step anyone should do is... You know, blow off your lawn. Get all the debris right in your lawn. Over the winter, you know, nuts and sticks and little rocks, anything that could fall out of the sky or from the road and might land into your lawn, you should really get your lawn blown out. Or okay, uh, done. It's done. What's next? Next thing I would say is if you had a lot of weeds in your lawn, do a uh, weed and feed. Weed and feed is going to kill out all the weeds but still give fertilizer to your lawn. Now, do you need a spreader for the for the weed and feed thing? Is that best? Or That's can you best. Just... I mean, if, it's all about what size your property is. Is your property, you know, 3,000 square feet or is it 25,000 square feet? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, less for square feet, you can just take the bag, put it in a five-gallon bucket, and just throw it around. But now if you have a big lawn, you can set it at how much square feet of how much it's going to throw out in a spreader. And it's going to throw out... You know, say ten feet wide, okay, and you go every ten feet and do it that way. So, so I've 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 got the weed and feed down, and I've done that. It's taken me five days. No, I did it in fifteen minutes. Uh, what is there anything else I should be doing simultaneously on the well, same day or within a couple of days? Well, before you do the weed and feed process, take a look at your lawn. If there's a lot of yellow and brown and tan oh, grass in there, yeah, you might want to hire someone to come in and. Thatch your lawn. Oh, Thatching is a process that rips up all the dead grass out of your lawn. And what we do at Skytop Landscaping, we go a step further. I have my guys actually use blowers. And they blow out all that stuff that they just thatched out of your lawn and blow it out. And then they load up into one of our trucks and takes that away. 
and then we would do either a core aerating process or we would just do a weed and feed. Now if you don't need the weed and feed, you don't have that many weeds, I usually recommend just doing a lime, a seed, and a fertilizer. If you have a lot of shade, we use a shade seed. If you have part sun, part shade, we use a uh, sunshade seed. Now, now hold on. So, so you can do all that for me. I get that. But what if, what if I just want to try it myself? What would you, what would you recommend? How, how can I thatch? Should I just pull out dead you grass? You know what? Or? What you do, aside from renting a machine, use a hand rake. Use a uh, leaf rake. We have a metal leaf rake. Oh, sure, sure. And just go against your lawn, ripping okay. up all the dead grass and sticks and stones out of your lawn. And should I should I then seed those areas? Seed those areas. Does it have to be the same grass? Do I have to know what the grass no, is? No, not at all. No, it could be any kind. It could of be grass. anything. And then and then uh, do I once the seed is down? Do I fertilize the same day? You can fertilize the same day or following day, and then do a magic cow lime. The magic cow lime helps out the pH levels in your lawn making it much short, stronger and hardy grass. So I can get a bag of lime. Can I lay that down at the same time as I lay the furniture, uh, the uh, fertilizer down? Yes. So I could do I could do fertilizing, I could do thatching, fertilizing, liming and and uh, the weed and feed stuff no, and you the seeding. You don't want to do, you don't want to do the weed and feed with all those other processes. It's in, if in the spring you just want to lay your weed and feed and nothing else for a month or two. Oh, so, so right now I should go do the lead, weed and feed. I would recommend doing And don't do any feed. thatching or seeding or liming. Yeah. Wait a month and then do the liming and you know, the seeding. It's, it's, the it's up to your preference. You could do the thatching, blow out the lawn, and do the weed and feed. That's going to kill whatever is left in the lawn and make it a little bit stronger. And In the weed and feed, it's still a fertilizer. It's going to still grow. Your grass grow. Okay. But if you don't have many weeds, do the thatching still. And do a seed, a lime, and a fertilizer. So if I don't have any, uh, I don't need to use the weed and seed if I have a fairly good lawn and weed I don't and have any weeds. Yeah, I could just use regular fertilizer. Correct. Right? What about what about various manures? I like I chicken manure and cow manure. Our horse manure is, is that stuff really good for a garden or is that really bad for a for good grass? for a garden? But Not so for much your grass, for grass, you know, you can lay it down lightly. Yeah. You know, it will help it out, but. We usually don't really do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then once you fertilize, Chip, uh, uh, you know, as the first pr in the process, do you water right away? Do you soak it in? Do you let it sit? What do you do? Let it sit. Put a little water down, but most of the time you can just let it sit. And okay. it'll do its own job. And then it'll it'll uh, it'll eventually sink in. And you say a month later, then you can do the, the thatching seed. and the liming and the seeding. Can you do that all at once? Or do you, do you, you need do to do those in order? Okay. Okay, and 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 uh, there are some things that I've seen where you can aerate your like spikes or roller yeah. things. Does any of that stuff help? Yes, it does. It allows the grass to be able to breathe. You can rent a uh, core aerator and that puts the plug holes into the ground. Okay. Them. Okay. Can you can you can you just buy some little thing you roll from the you hardware store? You can do that store? too. You know they have ones that you can put behind your garden tractor. Okay. Like a kit you can build and do that. You, you know some of the hardware stores has a uh, spike you can push. And if you have, even if you have a really small lawn, and I, I we have these but barely ever use them, is ones that hook onto your feet. Oh, you well, I've and, seen those. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. spike little holes over That's your That's kind of interesting. As long as you don't walk on balloons, you'll yeah, be right. you'll be fine. And so, so is the once the lawn and all this stuff is done, and it starts to grow. What is the what is the maintenance for the rest of the summer? What, when do you fertilize again? When do you lime again? When do you do all these things? Usually we do have a process in the spring, you know, you can do maybe a fertilizing in the summer, and really we kind of hit the same process again in the fall. And, you, and should you should you fertilize, not not when it's too hot, you should fertilize in the, in like the the middle summer, middle of summer, middle and then summer. again in the fall? Do you need to lime again? Do you need to lime your yard? It's all about what your lawn looks like. Another question I have is, you know, I have a little push lawnmower, and I don't have a catcher. Is that going to be a problem? I know if, if it's really long, it'll be a problem. I need to rake really it up. Long. But if it's if I'm just cutting off two or three inches, is that going to bother the grass no, or should I get just, it up? You're putting nutrients right back into the ground. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. And yeah. what about pests? What is What are some of the pests that exist here at the Jersey Bay Shore that you run into that disturb the grass? You have moles. Okay. You have uh, ground And freckles. Hogs. You have moles and freckles. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So you have moles. You have what else? You have groundhogs. Groundhogs. Uh, do you think that uh, grass should be watered every day and for how, how long? Well, usually, you know, regular grass is pre-existing. 
you can let that go a few days and water again. If it's really hot out, put a hose on it, put a sprinkler on it. If you put down brand new sod, you have to water twice a day for about two weeks, is what I recommend. Wow. And oscillating sprinklers, uh, I, I use those and I put those on timers as well, uh, I sh should go on in the morning and, and the evening when it's cool, when it's not hot. Correct. And how long should you keep your oscillating sprinkler going over there? You should let it go for 45 minutes to an hour. Really? Yeah. I had, I tell you, I, I was watering like crazy because I thought my grass was dying and and I had a $500 water bill one time. So it was, wow. uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, okay, so that's the lawn. And there are lawn services, not necessarily landscapers, but there are lawn services that will come. And I mean, it, the lawn service could be a kid who lives down the down the block and comes and 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 cuts your your grass. That's how but you start. do you do it from small yards to giant estates, don't you? We You've do, got it all. We do small lawns, giant estates, con commercial condo properties. And you know what I like about you guys? You have a you have a very professional crew, and you all wear uniforms, so it doesn't look like a bunch of ragamuffins. <laughs> doesn't look like your house is being robbed by. People wearing jeans and torn T-shirts, right? Correct. It's a good thing. All right. Now, um, I have uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Chip uh, before last year when I first moved in, and we did some fantastic stuff outside. And what I like about Chip is we sort of compromise his expertise and my creativity, and his creativity too, and my expertise sort of came together. And we were able to, to 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 create something out of virtually nothing. I had a jungle in the backyard, didn't I? More than a jungle, it looked like the Amazon. It was, and it and it you couldn't you couldn't. I mean, I was afraid to go because there might have been some kind of primitive creatures crawling through and slithering through the underbrush. But it's all beautiful now. My little two-year-old granddaughter uh, will play out there. We're going to put a swing set out there, and that sort of thing. Uh, but the next thing is planting. And I keep hearing things about, well, you really shouldn't plant until the last hard, hard frost has, has worked its way through our environment. Uh, what, is your, what is your rule of thumb on when I can start planting? Because I go out there, look, look, I'm ready. I got my, I got my pruner ready here. I've got to be very careful. Look how rusty this. And I got this thing. I'm ready to dig. I'm ready to prune. Uh, are you frightened that I'm holding these? A little bit. Uh, what should I do now in my head about going out and planting stuff? I don't even know what to plant, but what's your rule of thumb? Uh, right now, this season has come much sooner. The spring has come much sooner than last winter. Last winter, we were snow plowing commercial properties until, you know, the first week of April, until it really started to get warmer out. I mean, we didn't start cutting lawns last year until end of April, first week of May. Do you believe uh, as we let's let's switch over to plants now in terms of the uh, uh, shrubs and 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 just decorating and there, there's a couple of things that people do. One one is people just sort of see the plants that come up year after year and they might trim them back, they might water them, and then other people might say, you know, I'm going to change things around. I'm going to put a waterfall out back and I'm going to put a palm tree here and that'll live for a summer, and then I'll put some other things over here. Um, the, what is the value of having a landscaper versus just me going to some nursery just saying I'll take that, that, and that? What, are the, what, what do you know about plants that I don't know? I know what type of plants we should put in, like what ones are going to grow year after year, which ones are going to work better, that other plant, plant, existing plant, the color coordinations, the heights our plants are going to grow. Some plant might just grow three feet, but another one might grow 35 feet. You might plant three plants too close, and one plant grows four feet wide, while one carve grows 40 feet wide. And, and there's also the certain plants that I've learned over the years here that, that uh, like a lot of sun, and some like a little sun, but not too much, and some like the shade, and some like different kinds of soils, a dry soil, a, 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 a moistery soil, and then a very wet soil. Isn't that right? That's right. Correct. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do I win anything? Look, this is, this is more humor. It's spring. We are so excited. We wet our plants. I'm sorry. One of the things I wanted to talk to Chip about was uh, the idea of, of seedlings. And, you know, when can I throw seeds out there? For instance, I got some roll 
a, like a papery roll with 500 English garden wildflowers that are literally embedded in the paper. And the paper will disintegrate with time. And you put the paper out. I think you might put a little sand over it or, or soil. You wet it. You keep it wet. And they, the seedlings start, and you'll have wildflowers. Where did you get that, John? I got that at, at one of our major drugstore chains. So here's my question. And <laughs> they weren't cheap. Can I plant seeds now, or yes, am, I, am I in danger of having the first frost just kill them away when I plant them? You know, right now, this point of the season, I would recommend it. It's not too cold out anymore. Last week, we had a couple 80-degree 80, 80, 80 days, 78. You know, I can just see the season just getting warmer and warmer as we progress. And, and think about, too, because uh, I've had to learn to do this, think about uh, what you want your plants to do. For example, some may bear fruit. Might be kind of fun to have a raspberry bush or whatever tree or whatever they are, or a banana tree if you lived in Florida. Maybe you want a butterfly bush that attracts butterflies, or or certain kind of bushes that attract the hummingbirds. Uh, think about that and think about how you juxtapose all of these things so that you enjoy them. What are some hedges that aren't necessarily used for privacy that could just add some green along the side of a house? You can go skip laurels. If skip laurels are a longer leaf. About six inches long, four or six inches, and it's a evergreen plant. So it stay green all year round. It's like a soft, soft leaf. It's a beautiful looking plant. Uh, you can go uh, privet hedge, and privet hedge is a bunch of small little plants kind of intertwine themselves around oh, really? each other. They just grow as one hedge. You see a lot of houses in Rumson, New Jersey, that have long hedges going down the road that are privet hedges. You can do uh, emerald green. Arborvitaes or green giants. Green giants grow the tallest each year, anywhere from a foot to a three foot a year. And they get tall and they come out a little bit. And you can keep them shaved down and let them just grow in height wise to hide your neighbor's houses. So you have much more of a privacy look. Emerald green arborvitaes are the light green type arborvitaes that seems, everyone seems to have in this area. Mm -hmm. And they stay skinny. They grow very slow, but you can put them closer together and just run them down a sidewalk or down a driveway you go Leland cypresses they grow nice and high and they grow out wide again you can keep them a little shaved down and last year uh, you uh, uh, put in some black mulch we put in I, I don't know five yards or more than that, five or, yards what was it about five yards and it I like the black it comes in red and tan and brown and, and black yes, cedar the, what is it? Yes, and cedar, cedar mulch. Cedar. Well, the, the black is great because everything gets kind of punched out. You see the colors of the flowers. Oh, and the we did your house last year. It showcased your house. Exactly. Where your white picket fence and your little walkway with a trellis coming over. It just showcased everything nicely. It, it does. And I want to do it again this year. I guarantee it. But, you know, the thing that, that I want to say is when you go to a place, uh, uh, some of these nurseries, you just buy bags of mulch. Don't do it. You know, find a landscaper, something like Chip. And he'll bring his truck in here, and he'll dump it exactly where you want it to be dumped. And he'll have his guys spread it, or you can spread it if you if you have the strength. And and, and what about uh, what about selecting uh, someone? You know, there's two kinds. There's a landscaper, like I said, that will actually sit down with you and help you decide how you want to scape the land. And then there's just simply the lawn service, which could be the kid down the block. And you do all of that and more. And we're not going to talk about everything that you provide because he does a year-round service for, you know, snowing and gutters and all kinds of stuff. Uh, what do you look for when you look for a landscaper? And how does the experience of utilizing a landscaper work? Is it going to cost me $20,000 to landscape my home? Do you have a minimum that you're required to be a landscaper? I called you. I said I need some help. Yeah. What happens? Well, first thing you want to find is a landscaper if you're insured and licensed. Oh. We're fully, fully insured. We're a licensed company. We're, I find us top of the line. Uh, you want a landscaping guy that knows what he's doing. You know, a lot of guys are out there and they're running around with these old pickup trucks and one mower in the back and they're just cutting your lawns. I mean, now, you've been doing this since you were two. Yeah, I started, Maybe not quite two. Not but. Like quite two. I mean, two around my property. I actually <laughs> started my company in seventh grade. I told a teacher I was opening a company. She told her neighbors, <laughs> and my parents actually drove me back and forth to all my jobs. So you can say I've been doing it for a really long time. And and, and not to interrupt, but while, we, while I have interrupted, he's also uh, uh, works for the Volunteer the Fire Department, Volunteer EMT. Correct. So I called you up and... Uh, 
You need to be professional. You need to be experienced. You have a crew that's clean and uniformed. All my guys are, are show up to your house, have matching red shirts, matching red hats. They're all dressed good looking. All our equipment's up to date equipment. Everything shines and looks good. All our trucks look good. And that's why I strive on it. All my guys look good. All my guys know what they do. You know, some of my guys are tree climbers, so they'll climb 60 feet into your tree and trim all your branches or take down that tree. Or other guys, my crew, lay pavers, walkways, and patios or Belgian block mm -hmm. along your driveway. I have my mowing crews that cut your lawns. You know, they do any house from a $25 house to a $150 plus house. And then we do our commercial properties. You know, we have our guys that do planting and mulching and cleanups. And the list just goes on and on. We specialize in laying sod, doing uh, drainage systems. So if you have a spot on your lawn that has collects a lot of water, we run drains throughout your property to Ooh. drain away from that area, put grates in, and it's a whole fun process. Yeah. So so you've come over, you sat down, and and uh, uh, let's get creative. Uh, you'll uh, you'll walk around the property, you'll walk measure it, property. you'll see what you'll get a sense of what I think. I do I have to be a millionaire to do this? Uh, I mean, it, it sounds not. like this is a big estate or something, is it? Absolutely not. Well, you've done my home, and I'm not a big estate. And, you know, you know, we work for everyone in everyone's budget. Well, I, I found you guys to be incredibly professional and. Uh, I'm excited this year because I'm in the Garden Walk, and and you helped me last year with everything I did there, and I had all kinds of plants just kind of, uh, just around really, uh, not in any real sort of order. And this year I want to kind of create a story. I want people to come up, look over my little, uh, you know, picket fence, and see, oh, there's a little scene over here, and there's a little scene over here, and, and oh, look, there's a little miniature castle with soldiers and little, you know, like over here. So kind of like a Disney World sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. What, and I'm going to have a waterfall out there. You were recommending a waterfall and more mulch and stuff like that. What are some other things that we could do out there? What are some things that you've seen where we could create a sort of a scene or a mood in a particular area? You know, in front of the property, in front of the fence, but between the sidewalk and the fence, you can do some like small little like evergreen type plants. There's so many flowers. We would do one plant, some flowers, another plant, another evergreen type plant. Another f so the evergreens would consist of something green all year round. The flowers, I believe that we discussed, were uh, annual, so they die off in the winter and come mm -hmm. back up in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we run those and made some Delaware River Stone kind of going in and out. So we take the Delaware River Stone up and around. We have a mulch in between, almost like a dragon's tail. Oh, cool. That's cool. I mean, may kind of do something up here. Maybe, I mean, it would be so creative. So maybe take some flowers up top, up and make it a head or something. And like two eyes and a little head. And just well, kind of I like that. I, li I like the idea of elevated things, you know, where you take some blocks and make an elevated planter. Maybe it's an irregular shape. I don't know. And you put some stuff up there. Oh, absolutely. What, what about, what, what are some good vine plants? There's, there's vines that grow up the side of your house and on trellises and things. Is there such a thing as a good vine plant, or they all get out of control? Most easy? of them all get out of control. But you can get an English ivy, but you have to watch it. Eventually, if you don't watch it, it'll go up the side of your house and start pulling off wood shakes or your siding, or if they go up trees and choke the tree out and kill the tree. You can do um, a, a grapevine. Yeah, it's just, just a bunch of little odds and ends. And what about ground covers, Chip? I know there's all kinds of ground covers, but I have a feeling they're like vines, too. They could get out of well, here. Well, pack you can put down. Pack usually multiplies, but if you keep it, you can stop it and such. The one thing I would tell people not to do is bamboo. Wild bamboo is just going to come off. You put it right here, and a week later it'll be over there. Really? They grow underneath the sidewalk field. Oh my god. They're shoots. They just take off every which they're way. They're taking over the country, those bamboos. I'm yeah, telling I know. you, they're, they're crazy. You and can do clump bamboo. Clump bamboo stays in one spot. Right, right. But you don't want to do a regular wild bamboo. Right. Or you don't want to put in Japanese knotweed. Because what not Japanese knotweed does is it grows up and it grows over, kills the grass or whatever plants in front of it. You would say grass, kills the grass until. There's no more grass, and then send shoots back up. You, you also do a lot of community service projects, don't you? Oh, correct. You, you've done, uh, we worked together where we met was uh, uh, an old black uh, cemetery in uh, the uh, village of Navasink. Some people say Navasink. Do you say Navasink? Navasink. Yeah, Navasink yeah, is African the African American group. cemetery. It dates back to early 1800s. Yeah, it was, it, it, and it was very neglected for decades. 
And uh, Chip came in there and volunteered to bring his crew in you know, and weed whack and landscape. I grew up. My house is back, you know, hundreds of yards back mm-hmm. behind that cemetery, oh, in front wow. of the cemetery. Wow. So when, a, when I was a kid, I used to hike through there and go through the woods and just be a normal young kid. So that cemetery means a lot to me. Yeah. So I brought my whole crew in actually for two days, I believe. Yeah. It and, became uh, a Middletown project. The mayor was out there, and some of the town officials were out oh, there. Absolutely. And, yeah, it was it was a pretty big deal. I just wanted to tell everyone sure. else if volunteering. We actually donate to elementary schools too. Wow. Wow. So, you know, I try to just go always go out of my way, or you know, we do numerous parades or donate stuff, or we're a top sponsor or something. Well, you you were into this uh, as a young boy, and and I, uh, gonna recommend that if your parents or grandparents. Uh, you involve your kids, uh, you know, uh, cr- uh, have them create a, a backyard uh, playground with uh, the right uh, trees, make sure they're not poisonous plants or they're not <laughs> going to get scratched up with lots of needles and that sort of thing. But, you know, butterfly bushes can be inter- interesting for kids. Uh, growing vegetables in a garden can, can be interesting for kids. And even planting seeds in the house as seedlings and watching them sprout and grow and then transplanting them outside be great for kids to take an interest in getting their hands dirty and uh, kind of getting to nature because I think that's an important lesson absolutely. for everybody especially at a young age right absolutely I was uh, actually in elementary school I was the only boy in their garden club I remember taking half my lunch period out and actually working on flowers and things and enjoyed it and actually the lady that's in charge of it from since I was in fifth grade or fourth grade she's actually still my customer to this day I've been doing her landscaping all this time. Great. Thanks, man. And thank you for watching another episode of Jersey Bay Shark Country. I hope you'll join me next week. Uh, There'll be a brand new show. And uh, Jersey Bay Shark can be seen on jerseybayshorecountry.com or any number of Facebook groups in the Jersey Bay Shore. Almost all of the towns uh, show the program. And I hope that if you have an idea, you'll contact me, John Schneider. Uh, Just send your email to John at uh, NewJerseyBayshore.com, and I'll respond to you. And if you see me out there in the garden, even if my hands are dirty, or I'm in a boat, you can wave to me, or I'm flying the drone, tap me on the shoulder and say hello, because nothing is more important than meeting you. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time on Jersey Bayshore Country. Bye-bye.